Hello, Ponce Church. I am here with Laura Straka. She is a friend and uh, knows quite a few people in our congregation. She works with RUF, Reformed University Fellowship at Emory University, uh, alongside George Hamm and others that uh, some of you know. And I'm here to talk to her about the topic of lament. She has written a book, is in the process still of editing and finishing, and I've learned quite a bit from her uh, through that book and just through conversations on this topic. And so as we begin to move toward uh, looking at this topic of lament throughout summer, I uh, just wanted to learn from her together. So first, Laura, just as a starting point, what is lament? So lament is unedited, honest prayer to God when you are in a place of disorientation or confusion. Paul Miller says it's sitting in the gap between what is true about God's promises and our experience. That would make us think God isn't good. So at this point, you're in the midst of writing a book on this topic of lament, but going back, mm -hmm. what led you initially to your personal study of lament and wanting to teach other people about? Yeah, so my first exposure to lament actually came in seminary when I wrote a paper on Psalm 42, which is a psalm of lament that includes a refrain of the writer preaching the gospel to himself that he's going to get out of a messy place and praise God again. So I started with a very academic approach to lament and then quickly practically learned lament in my own life as I wrestled through being single all through my 20s and crying out to the Lord for a good desire that was unmet and really wrestled with all of my questions for why it was taking so long. What could be wrong with me? Will I ever get this? And so I would walk around my neighborhood and just talk to the Lord and give him all of my questions. Then I would find myself in a place hungering and willing to trust the Lord in his timing and his goodness, even as I was waiting. Um, so that's actually the biggest way I grew in my relationship with Jesus is through lamenting singleness for longer than I thought I would. So Laura, from your experience you just shared, and then also as you've studied more, as you've taught other people in this, as believers, why do we need the language of lament? Why mm -hmm. does the Bible give us mm -hmm. so much material to learn this particular type of communication to God? Yeah, we need lament because this world is broken and there is much to lament. We have a God who names evil as evil. We have a savior who weeps over death, even as he has the power to be resurrected from the grave. So we have really rich theological reason to lament because suffering and trials and waiting in our life could tempt us to drift away from God or walk away from Him. And lament is the avenue in which we fight to stay near to God. Um, and then I think another really significant piece to lament connected to fighting to stay near to God is that lament clarifies who God actually is. It's in lament where we tell God, you don't feel good or trustworthy because of the things I see in my life. And as we wrestle with him, since he really cares about being known who, for who he truly is, he shows himself as good and trustworthy. And that's why lament is really necessary. Otherwise we end up with just a flat characterized view of God. So we have in scripture these incredible models of lament. Mm -hmm. How is this language that God has given to us in Psalms and in other places, how is it a blessing to us as God's children? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Psalms of lament and other lamentation in the scriptures is a great blessing to us because it's God telling us to come to him with our anger and messy hearts and confusion. And we can come in Jesus's name without having to first clean ourselves up or know the right answer. We can just go to him and cry out and then turn to remember who he is. That's really the two key parts of how to lament. We cry out to God, we lay out all of our complaints and confusion, but we can't end there. We then 
turn to remember who God is. It's just like how Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones talks about how Christians must preach the gospels, the gospel to ourselves. We have to remember what is true. And lament's a blessing because this is how we go from head knowledge to heart knowledge. I might know the theological answer to my sadness, but it's not comforting me. And it's as we engage in the gap that it becomes a comfort and a really sweet truth. So uh, in my experience, maybe in yours, I think many Christians just are not familiar with this language. And when introduced to it, don't feel a lot of freedom to speak in the ways that the Bible models mm -hmm. lament. So as Christians, what are we missing if we don't use this language or we don't know how to lament with God? Mm -hmm. When we don't lament, we miss connection. Connection with ourselves, being honest about where we are, and the opportunity to connect with the Lord, even as it may seem like a negative connection as we're saying the things that we don't understand or believe. We are still talking to God, just as Job still engaged with the Lord as he asked all of his questions. So if we don't lament, we miss connection. And kind of connected to that is instead we're just hiding. Just like Adam and Eve in the garden, we're stuck in our shame and our fear and our guilt. And just as in the garden, God moves towards us and says, where are you? Why are you hiding? And lament is God's gift to us to get to answer that very question with the one who helps us understand the world. So lament is a type of prayer and prayer always involves the work of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So how specifically does lament help us to experience the Holy Spirit in a unique way? The Holy Spirit is intimately at work in our prayers of lament. First, especially when we don't know what to pray and we are simply groaning, just like Romans 8 says, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us when we don't know what to say. And I think often the simplest prayer of lament is help look, and then we groan, and we can be confident that the Spirit of God Himself groans with us under the brokenness of this world, and then lament turns into this hopeful practice of longing for when God will be with us and the world will be made new and we will see Him face to face, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. So it's pretty incredible with the Spirit being our down payment guarantee of the new heavens and the new earth. Our groaning is how we as adopted heirs get to long for that day. So we've talked a lot about what is lament? Why do we need to lament? But practically, how? How do we practice lament? If you wanna move beyond the basic cry out and turn structure of lament, I recommend writing what I call a shadow psalm. So take a psalm of lament, Psalm 13, Psalm 42, there are many, Psalm 23 even, it doesn't even have to be a lament psalm. And what you'll do is you'll go line by line and respond to God's word with all of the shadowy, messy questions that you have, essentially confessing what it's like with God seemingly not with you. So you let God's word evoke that out of your heart line by line. So you have this whole dark, angsty prayer, and that is your lament. But you still need to turn, and so then you rewrite it back to yourself. You can call it a light psalm, and you tell yourself the truth from each of those lines as a way to preach the gospel to yourself. And that can even be, Lord, help me believe that you are my shepherd and I don't lack anything with you. So that's one practice you can try. Just use God's word and let it draw you out. And then a second practice is you can look at the questions that God asks us throughout scripture. Do you want to be well? What can I do for you? Do you do well to be angry? and answer him, answer that question. And once you've gotten it all out, go back and read the whole context of that story and see what does the Lord want me to see and know 
from that question about who he is and who he says I am. So those are two practices to give a try. So Laura, as we learn to practice lament, learning from scripture, learning to just put it into our own words, mm -hmm. where does lament take us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that lament takes us in at least two ways. The first one is lament always gives birth to hope because we've turned to God to wait for him to act. And you could think of hope as having a redemptive imagination to be on the lookout for how God is gonna bring restoration to dark, dry, dead places. So lament leads us to hope because we've made a turn. And the process of lament, learning to hold two seemingly contradictory things in tension, expands our heart and protects our hearts from growing hard with cynicism and despair and just the pain of unmet longing. So I have found that specifically deeply beneficial in my own heart, that lament keeps my heart soft when I just wanna shut it down and stop talking to God and hide from everybody. And lament moves us into connection. So you described earlier your path to learning about lament personally and now uh, studying it to teach others. Throughout that whole process, who have been some of the guides that have helped you along the way just to learn about mm -hmm. what it, what lament is, why we need it, how we do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my primary guide really has been Psalms of Lament, scripture, as I've just studied and pondered. Um, but the people whose shoulders I stand on, there are really three, um, three influential people that I've learned from lament. And that's Paul Miller in his book, A Praying Life, just learned so much from him about prayer, and he talks about lament there. Um, Dan Allender has a good bit on lament and hope. And then the last book is Mark Vrogop's book, Dark Clouds, Deep Mercies. So, Ponce, we're going to be continuing to learn about lament together on Sunday mornings and other ways. But if you want to continue to dig even deeper, those are great resources. And of course, we'll also look forward to Laura's book joining that list sooner than later. So thanks, Laura, for helping us with this and helping us to learn about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hayes.